we're going to quickly go over the basic settings on this tabber. Uh, right here we have the feed on and off that just runs the machine, runs the transport, and it doesn't tab anything when only the feed is running. It just passes the material through. So when you're first setting up your job, you'll want to put your material in there and just uh, once you adjust the gate and all that, uh, just turn the feed on and just run pieces through to make sure it's feeding properly. Uh, later on, you'll you'll switch on the tab button that activates the sensor that runs the tabs. So that's what those buttons do. On the back, we have this knob here, and this is just to adjust your tab sensitivity. And normally, you don't need to adjust that one very often at all. You'll only ever adjust that if you switch to a different type of tabs. Uh, these here are translucent tabs with a black backing, so they're pretty easy to run because the sensor can detect this white mark in between, so these are definitely the type of tabs that you want to use on these tabletop tabbers. And the translucent tabs, you can almost can't see it on there, but uh, but that's what they look like. And I found on these machines, if they're calibrated properly, usually around position seven on the sensor back here is what you want. So usually just about right there, so you don't have to mess around with setting up the um, the procedure in the manual to try to get it right. Like usually seven is what works, so we'll start off there. If you have weird problems where there's multiple tabs coming out or it's making a mess down here, uh, then that sensor is probably wrong. But once you get it adjusted right and it's working good for the type of tabs you use, then don't ever change that sensor on the back, that sensitivity adjustment. Uh, and then this is this is another one that you'll need to adjust from time to time. This is just the tab placement. And so we'll want to start off in the middle. See that says top, that says bottom, and this is your little gauge. So uh, we'll put this mark just about in the middle. And that's just uh, showing how much the tab wraps around your your trifold or whatever you're tabbing so how much of the tab is showing on the top and how much is showing on the bottom and uh, so you can just move this now don't move it based on the first piece that comes out sometimes the first one will be a little bit off and so just run like maybe 10 pieces through and uh, so it kind of finds its spot that it wants to run at and then you might tweak this a little bit to, to get it even so the same amount of tab is on the top and bottom of your page of your paper that comes through your folded mail so those are just the basic settings this is a, a counter um, it, it remembers even when the power when you shut off the machine and unplug it it saves the number in there so that's just counting how many pieces went through and this is just the reset changes it back to zero it's pretty simple so that's uh, the basic controls. So to install the tabs on the machine, we'll uh, put them up here. So this is a, these are inch and a half tabs, so this is a roll of 4,000. 4,000 is the maximum size roll that fits on here for inch and a half. If you're running one inch tabs, the rolls come in rolls of 5,000 tabs. and uh, that's uh, their standard sold that those sizes. Uh, so put that piece on there. Make sure this is coming around on the front side. And also you'll want to pull off uh, the tabs for about 12 to 15 inches on the leader here. And once you put it on here, uh, there's a braking gauge, so it's easier. So you can't rotate it without this lever being pulled so it's best just to pull the tabs off when you have it on the table for, before you put it on there. And then mount this retainer piece on, make it nice and tight on there. And then we put the, the strip around the back of that and when it pulls forward it, it pulls this which releases the brake which allows the roll to spin. 
so we'll have to take this out and then you run the backing material and remember there's no tabs on on this if there were they would start peeling off and making a mess in here so we just uh, slide the backing material through the sensor and this is just a little side guide so we can adjust that so it's it directs it right into the sensor you don't want it too tight so it's pinching it but just uh, enough to direct it into the sensor properly the sensor itself uh, also can slide back and forth normally you won't move it but it needs to be lined up because the side of the backing paper is against the sidewall of this stand here and then it runs right into the sensor so the backing material needs to be all the way against the side of the sensor so we pull some through now and like that and then the next step is we'll want to make sure the tab pressure knob is turned off so that is this setting okay see that spins the pressure is off so you'll take this and stick it in there sometimes it helps to tear the paper so it's uh, kind of uh, angled um, so there's one edge that's more sticking out than the others so you kind of have a tip but this this is working so you want to go right between this piece and the one right below it is where you insert the backing paper and just kind of push it in until it kind of hits on something and then then turn this tab advanced knob which turns a roller inside there that will cause it to pull up And, uh, and then it starts coming out the top here. And you pull it, pull it out and pull it tight and make sure that everything looks good and straight. And then once you have it nice and tight and straight, be sure to turn this tab pressure knob back. So uh, it's putting pressure now on here and that's how the machine uh, pulls this paper through. So then uh, you want it to stick out just about that far no more uh, and, and just put it in between these two fingers and this uh, takes up the, the backing paper when it's finished. So now uh, we'll want to turn this tab advance actually at this point We'll turn the tab advance knob all the way until we have a tab uh, soon coming down. So this is the first one that that uh, is the, on the backing paper because we pulled the other ones off. So we'll pull it down just to where it's like starting to go into the sensor. So uh, so it'll be pretty quick once we start running. So uh, now we got that. So I'm going to tear off the paper about right here so that can work and then we put this roller back in like that and now the the tabs are loaded and ready to run so the next thing we'll do is we'll set up the feed end and we'll get it feeding good before we turn on the tab button To set up the feeding in this tabber, we're going to adjust in here where the where the paper goes in. Uh, these are called gate tips or separator tips. They do sometimes wear out. They uh, are the part that wears out the fastest on these machines. So if they get to where they're flat on the bottom, you'll start to get double sheets and you won't be able to adjust to compensate for it so you'll need to replace these gate tips but it's really easy it's just a screw in the middle of each one 
So uh, the way you adjust them is this knob here and this knob over on the other side and it helps to get these, these side guys out of the way while we're doing this. So loosen both of those so now this whole gate assembly can go up and down. And then usually to start off, uh, and by the way I'm just using envelopes here for test material. Normally you wouldn't put envelopes in a tabber, but uh, you're going to have like a trifold mail piece or something like that. But uh, what you do is you put your your piece that you're going to feed through. Uh, what I usually like to how I usually like to start is just put two pieces under it, and then just let the gate drop down on them, and uh, and then just tighten it right there. Um, and usually that's the right setting for just one piece. Uh, it's just a kind of a little shortcut trick. Uh, it isn't always right if you have something uh, really thick or uh, unusual thickness that might not come out right, but uh, but that's a good kind of starting place. And then from there you can maybe tweak it a little more, but you have to remember when you loosen these, you loosen one side, you're only loosening one side, so if you lift up that side a little bit, you might need to go the same on the other side. So what I like to do is just... Uh, Obviously the, the machine is turned off and so I like to just uh, use my thumb here and just rotate the wheel and, uh, and just get it to feed one piece that way so I can tell that it's, that it's working and, uh, and then you can just uh, See that it's feeding in. So, so uh, I'm I'm happy enough with that setting that I'm ready to start running them through and see what happens. So the next thing we'll do is we'll adjust the side guides. Now, uh, these supports are are movable. There's different settings, so you'll want to put them in the right place where you where they can support your paper and also get the tab in the right place. Now, the tabbing head does not move. It's always right there. It's always gonna put the tab on right here. So, depending on where you want the tab on your paper is, is where you're gonna set these side guides. So, if for instance you're doing two tabs, you'll want to adjust it kind of like that. And then once it goes through one time, you'll flip it over and go through again. So you don't have to move your side guides at all. You just run it through one way and then take your stack put it in and go through the other way. Uh, on these I'm just going to put the tab like in the middle so I'm just going to put it right right there so these side guides have this screw or this uh, adjustment here and so we'll just lock it down and on the edges uh, you can maybe see better when you put a stack in but you don't want it to pinch, so we'll leave it just a little bit of, of room on the side. And uh, see over here, when, I, when I'm moving it over, I'm, I'm hitting that. So that means I need to move this piece over to this setting. So I'll do that, and then I'll be ready to uh, turn the machine on. So once I, I get this all set up, the next thing I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll hit the feet the feed button. Uh, well, I'll turn the power switch on, which is down here, plug it in, turn it on, and then hit the feed button and get it running good just uh, just without putting tabs on, but just feeding. And we'll want to see a little gap in between each piece that goes through because that's how the media sensor, which is down here, detects uh, when a new page is coming. Uh, so you don't want to have it where they're overlapping when they're going through. That means that your gate setting isn't right. So you'll want to get it running smoothly and nicely. Uh, this is the, the catch tray, so you can adjust this to where they drop in there nicely and make a stack. Uh, and while you're doing this, make sure that like this roller is in place and all that, because that helps drive it through. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll do that next. 
And one more thing on setting up the feed area here, these backstops are important. We need to put it right so when when it's against the gate tips, when your paper's against the gate tips, this is against the back. You don't want it so tight that it's pinching it, but you want it pretty close. So we'll adjust these. Because the when you have a stack in here, it's going to drop in. The bottom piece is going to drop in, and that's the one that the wheels take away. So that's adjusted now. Before you put your folded mail pieces into the feeder, uh, be sure to fan the stack so things aren't stuck together. Also, uh, since it's pulling from the bottom and it's pulling from the front, don't just put the stack in straight. It helps to uh, kind of twist them a little bit like that so, so that the bottom of the pile is forward, at least on the, the bottom part of the stack that you put in. And usually you'll want to turn off the feed while you're putting the, the first ones in, at least. So, so I like to kind of uh, do it like this so it's pointed forward and get it in there. And then I advance the, the wheel with my thumb a little bit so that one is like starting to pull forward just like that. And that's that's the the perfect way to to guarantee that it's going to start feeding uh, properly. So after this, as long as you don't let it run out, you can keep stacking more in on on top as it's running, and that's the best way to run it. So see, we got like a, a gap between each one. That's perfect.